Welcome to Electron Line, and here let's take a look at the sphere. Now again, just like with the circle, the only thing we need to know about the sphere is the radius, because every point on the sphere is equidistant from the very center of the sphere. Now when we try to find the volume and the surface area, they're pretty straightforward. Of course, most of us don't quite remember the surface area of a sphere. I've had it asked by lots of students during tests going, what is the surface area of a sphere? And the only thing you can really do is try to memorize it. But for the volume, it turns out, the volume of a sphere is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. First of all, since it's volume, we would expect r raised to the third power. We want to see a cube there because we're talking about the volume, and typically volumes are related to cubes. We do want to have the pi there, and the number, the fraction in front, is 4 thirds. So this is the volume of a sphere. We can find that equation again using some advanced methods of calculus, but we don't need to do that here. We can simply memorize what that equation is. But now for the surface area. The surface area is equal to, well, again, we expect to find the pi in there. And since it's the surface area, area is associated with squared, we know that it needs to be r squared. Now the question is, what number goes in front there? And that you simply have to memorize. And it turns out the number is 4. 4 pi r squared is the surface area of a sphere, and 4 thirds pi r cubed is the volume of a sphere. Hmm. Notice you have 4 pi r cubed, 4 pi r squared. The only thing is with the volume is divided by 3. Think of this exponent here coming down here. And there is some truth to that when we use calculus, but at least at this point, that would be sufficient to remember. If you can remember those two equations, it will help you down the road a lot so that you don't forget what these constants are in front of the pi r cubed and the pi r squared. And that's how we do that.